So, morning everybody. Great to see you all again. Okay, today's video has been a really tricky one to be honest. I've really thought long and hard about whether I should make it or not. I don't talk a lot about gear on this channel, but I've just gone through a decision-making process myself. So I thought it'd be good to share some of those thoughts with you guys. And before I get into that though, I wanted to talk about my calendar. So thanks ever so much for everybody that's ordered it. I've got a few left, not many, I think there's a hundred, something like that. Um, and I've extended the pre-order date until the end of today, so S Sunday when this, this video is published. So if you do want to get this with a free print, actually I should show the prints, with a free print, and this is a print that I usually sell for £69. Um, here they are. You get one of these selected at random. Then you need to get your order in. Um, today. So you need to get your order in today. And I'm going to be posting those out and packing them next week. My kids are still off school, so I'm going to pay them 20p a calendar. Is that enough? Yeah, 20p a calendar to pack them. So, so you'll also be supporting my children to go out and buy some sweets, candy for the US people over there. And yeah, thanks for everybody ordering that. Okay, let's get on to this discussion about gear and the decision criteria around gear. So how, how many of you have been taking an, an, an image or you've shown somebody an image, a friend or maybe a, a colleague and they've gone, you must have such a good camera. Does that frustrate you? It really frustrates me because when you usually react to that to think, well, actually it's not about the camera, it's about the photographer. But then we all go out and new gear comes out and we all talk about it, like the new Nikon, there's a new DJI drone out, they're talking about the X-T3, there's a new Canon mirrorless coming soon. And we get so excited about it, we think, oh, we're gonna get this new camera, it's gonna make such a big difference to our photography. Yeah, when somebody says to you, you must have such a good camera, your immediate reaction is, well, it's not about the camera, it's about me as a photographer, which is right. It is about us as photographers. It's about how we use our gear to, 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 to get the best photo. But gear is important, and I care passionately about gear, and it makes a really big difference to, to how I take photos. So I wanted to go through that now. Okay, so the first thing is price. So you've got to decide what price bracket you're going, you're going to buy a camera in. But once you've decided that, and I'm going to go into that in a lot of detail, but once you've decided how much you're willing to spend on a camera, then there are two main factors that you need to take into account, and that's image quality and efficiency of capture. And those two things are the critical decision criteria for buying a camera or upgrading your camera. So, I think one of them is more important than the other. I'm gonna get into what I think is actually the less important one first, which is image quality, and then I'm going to get into efficiency of capture. And the reason I think image quality is less important, because it's not actually the absolute image quality, but it's the difference in image quality that you're looking at, because usually you are upgrading from a previous model of, of camera. So what you're looking at is, is that difference in image quality gonna make a difference to my photography? Is it going to ultimately improve my photography? So if we get into image quality, I think there's a few things to, to look at there. So the first obvious one, we'll get the elephant out of the room, is megapixels. And I always, I always think this is quite funny because everyone talks about megapixels. So megapixels are important, but not all megapixels are equal. So if you take the new 48 megapixel sensor that Sony announced for a mobile phone, then that's obviously 48 megapixels. Why don't we all go out and just get that phone because it's got the most megapixels. But obviously those pixels, the, the, the pixel pitch, the size between the photo sites is closer together and that leads to all sorts of problems, noise, etc. So in terms of megapixels, it's important to look at the quality of those megapixels. But then you've also got to think to yourself, why do I need 45 megapixels? So why, you know, if you're gonna go for a Sony or, or a Nikon, which, which are the two competing options at high megapixels, full frame sensors, then you've gotta think, do you really need that many megapixels? And, and the best question to ask yourself is how big do you print? So if you're printing less than 16 by 24 inches, so A2, then 24 megapixels is ample. You're never gonna see the difference. I did a video about it here between a 24 megapixel and 45 megapixel camera. I know loads of people are gonna disagree with me there, but it's true. 
Um, the, 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 the thing is that a lot of people don't do that. Now obviously you can talk about cropping, but really you should get it right in camera when you're actually taking the shot. I, I think that's important because I think if you start to take shots and then crop afterwards to get that composition, then you're not really doing your job as a photographer correctly in the field. So I, I really encourage people, certainly on my workshop, to get it set up right. You know, move forward or move back and, and try and get that, that, that right shot. Now, there are gonna be occasions where you can't do that and you do have to crop it. And those very few occasions, it might be good to have more megapixels, but they're very few and far between. Now for me, personally, I, I actually now want to start printing bigger images. I've had quite a lot of inquiries from people saying, can you print you know, really, really big? And that is a, a disadvantage of some of the images that I've got with my X-T2 where I might not be able to print them quite as big. And because I lost my D D810 in, a, in an accident, <laughs> um, then I'm obviously looking for a new camera at the moment, which is why I'm really making this video. And, and as I've been going through that decision process to look at a new, a new camera, then obviously I want to go to a higher megapixel camera to be able to fulfill the needs of printing larger. I also have some commercial jobs that demand higher megapixels. So for me, megapixels is important, but they've got to be good quality megapixels. So the next and second most important thing with image quality is noise. And this is also related to the pixel pitch, so how close the um, photo sites are together and whether you're going to get noise in camera. There's lots of other things that you've got to think about as well. But noise is really important. So if you take these two images, this was this one, both images that I took in, uh, the. if you take these two images, both images that I took in Iceland, one was 15 years ago with my D100, which was a six megapixel camera, and it, wasn't great at noise, and actually it's dealt with this scene pretty well, to be honest. But if I try and pull out the detail in the shadows, you can see that's super noisy. But if you take the one that I took this year with my D810, and, and as I pull out the details of the shadows in this image, then you can see that there's a lot less noise. So noise is really important in, in cameras, but to be honest, Again, you know, it's, it's small changes, really small changes. So you're not gonna see a massive difference in, in noise unless you're shooting at longer exposures or um, maybe you're shooting astrophotography where it does make quite a significant difference and you probably do want to look at a camera that's got much better noise. So the third thing for image quality is dynamic range. So dynamic range is something that everybody talks about a lot. It, you know, the, the best we've got in terms of dynamic range is our eyes, they're incredible. Whenever you look at a scene, you take a photo, you think, why is that shadow so dark? And it's, you know, and I can't expose for the sky and the shadow at the same time. And your eyes seem to do an incredible job of, of getting that right. But, um, but cameras are getting better and better now and there's more stops of dynamic range. And that's something that's, again, really important to me as, as a landscape photographer. Ideally, I want to do away with filters. I don't want to have to use grad filters on, on my camera. Uh, so the bigger dynamic range I can get, the better that I can expose the sky and the shadow detail in the scene in one shot. Now you can obviously take multiple exposures and blend them together or you can put filters on, but ideally you want to be able to get it all in one shot. So, so yeah, that, that's important. Again, looking at two photos, if you look at an, a, a shot I took here in Iceland back 15 years ago with my D100, it really struggled with this scene. I couldn't, I couldn't get the, the sky in the, the, the dynamic range and, and also using a grad on this scene would have been really difficult because of the top of the image. I, I didn't at the time take multiple exposures and then blend them, probably just didn't know that technique 15 years ago. But now, you know, if you look at this scene, which is a similar type of scene, you can see that the edge of the cloud there, which was really, really contrasty compared to the shadow detail in the mountain and the, and the D810 ca captured that so well. And a new camera is gonna do that better. So I'm really, really looking for better dynamic range in a camera. I actually would prioritize that over megapixels and noise, I think dynamic range is, is really important. And then there's two other things which I think probably slightly less important, which is color. Uh, I think it's a very personal thing. I really like the color rendition from a Fuji. Ultimately, if you're shooting raw though, you can, you can grade that however you want, so it's not massively important, but the tonal differences and, and how it deals with those tonal gradients within an image is important. So it's worth looking at that and looking at some sample images, what you like, whether you take portraits or landscapes or sport or whatever, it's gonna make a difference to you. I personally like the Fuji, um, 
but I, I, I don't think the Nikon's quite as good in terms of in terms of color, but I don't think there's a huge amount of difference in that. And then the final thing is lenses, so lens quality. Obviously, if you've got a 45 megapixel camera and you put poor glass on the front of it, then, and it's soft at the edges, then what's the point of having an amazing sensor? So you've got to have really, really good glass if you're going to use a higher resolution sensor. And actually what I would say is before upgrading your camera, really think about your, your, your lenses. Are they the best lenses that you can get for the current system? And if they're not, then think about upgrading those first before you upgrade your camera. Because I think you'll find that that makes a significantly bigger difference to your images. Okay, so that's it for image quality. Um, Let's, go on, get, let's get on to efficiency of capture. So efficiency of capture is a term that I use for how easy it is to get that image when you're out in the field. How often have you got to a scene where you've, you've sort of got your camera out and then you've struggled because you've changed the settings and you know, you've taken some other shots maybe of your kids or, um, and, and then you've got out, you put your, your camera on your tripod and you've thought, oh, I've got to change the settings. By that time, the light's disappeared. So ha ha being able to use your camera and having a camera that's ergonomically friendly is, is really important because I'd rather have a really, really good camera at 24 megapixels that allows me to take that image time and time again really quickly than a really fiddly, difficult 45 megapixel camera. So that, that's something that's so important to me. And I think there's a few aspects to that efficiency of capture that I'd, I'd li like to go through. Yeah, so first the ergonomics, you know, there's a lot of things that have been brought in in, in the last few years. Touch screens are just an amazing thing. Be able to go through the menus with the touch screen, be able to click touch to focus is so, so useful. Having things like um, focus peaking is massively useful. And yeah, having, having a camera that is ergonomically easy to use, you know, those buttons are easy to find, there's dials on the top that are easy, easy to find. That's why I love the Fuji so much. The dials are just, so, so simple to use on it. And I, and I find it's just, just a pleasure to use it. N no other camera that I've ever used has come close to, to the ergonomics of a Fuji. But it's also a personal thing as well. So I think you've got to go and pick up and try that camera and, and, and test it out. So the next thing is focus. I put that in er ergonomics rather than image quality. I, I suppose you could have gone in either, but I think it, it is a something to do with the efficiency of capture. I think it's less impo important for landscape photographers than it is for obviously portrait wedding photographers or, or something like that, where you've just got to nail the focus all the time. And it seems that Sony are doing such an amazing job of that at the moment with eye focus. But for me, it, it's not crucially important. I'll get onto video just at the end of this, uh, at the end of this um, video and, and how it is important for video, but for stills, as long as I can touch to, to focus and say the point I want to focus, then that's all, that's all I want to know really. So let's get on to reliability. That's obviously critically important for efficiency of capture. And it's a really big topic of conversation at the moment with the new um, Z7, I'm gonna say Z, not Z, that's come out because obviously they've only got one card. And if that card fails, then you're gonna lose your images. I have to admit I'm disappointed about that because I'm really keen on getting a, a, a Z7 and you know that's made me think about it a little bit more and weigh up all these other factors. But I think that you know if I look at all the failures that I've had, I do shoot to two slots all the time, but if I look at all the failures I've had, and I've, I've had one failure and I've recovered the images from that over 18 years of shooting digital cameras, maybe I've been lucky, I don't know. And probably uh, if I do get one with one slot, I'll probably lose my images on the, on the, <laughs> the first week. But I think more important is, is the functionality of the camera and how it um, is reliable in terms of difficult conditions, how reliable it is in terms of lockups and things like that. I did have real issues with my first Fuji where it locked up all the time and that was really frustrating. I have to say with the X-T2, I don't get that so much. And I've never really had any issues with, with any Nikons that I've owned. So, but I think it's important. I think you've got to look at reliability. And then there are other things like battery life, stabilization that make things a little bit easier in the field. But the most important one is ergonomics. You know, you want to be able to use it and, and use it really well. It's one of the reasons that I say stick to one camera system and, and actually don't change your camera that much. Because if you do, then you get to know it really well and it becomes part of you. And you can just concentrate on composition get that great light in and not worry too much about the, all the features on your camera. So although it's important in the purchase decision, you really just want to then get to know your camera really well. And I did a video here on, on, on getting to know your camera, which I think is so, so important. So maybe go and watch that. 
Okay, so that's it. I, I, I quickly just touch on video because I, I also look at video and one of the reasons that I want to go full, fully mirrorless is because it's so important for me as a, a video shooter because having that continuous autofocus on two cameras, because I always take two cameras out in the field is so, so important. And the reason I want to stick with Fuji and, and probably a Nikon and have those two different systems is I like them both for different reasons. And I'm going to need two sets of lenses, whatever, because I need to use two sets of lenses at the same time quite often when I'm taking stills and video. So I've got a Fuji system, I've got a lot of Nikon lenses, so it makes sense to me to, to, to have both systems, but it's not going to be the same thing for everybody else. So in terms of video, I look at whether slow-mo is really important to me, so 120 frames per second is really important. You've seen my B-roll on my videos, it makes a big difference to the cinematic feel of those videos. Being able to shoot in logs is really important, higher, higher bit rates really important, and because you know to be able to color grade it correctly afterwards, which I spend a lot of time doing. So I want to be able to get the best quality out of the camera from, from that point of view. Obviously 4K is really important, so that I can shoot in 4K and, and then um, sample that into 1080p and, and zoom in and out of my, my shots really well. Finally for video, focus is really important. So you can't really focus continuously with video on a Nikon D810, and it's the same with a Nikon D850, but with a mirrorless camera, or certainly a mirrorless Nikon, then, it, then I think the focus is gonna be much better. Whether it would be good as a Fuji, I don't know, but, the, but, but it's certainly gonna be better than the SLR version of, of the Nikons, which the, the continuous focus in video is just not great. Okay, so that's it. Because I've just gone through so much in this video and I've given lots of information, I thought it'd be a really good idea to send out a special e-newsletter. So I'll probably do that in maybe four or five days with all this information in and I'll, I'll sort of put, it, put, put all this information together of some criteria of what you should go through to, to buy a camera. All you need to do is make sure you signed up to my newsletter. I'll put a link here and I'll put a link in the description below for my e-newsletter. It's free, so you'll get all that information for free. Okay, finally, um, giveaway. So two weeks ago, I announced the giveaway and we've got this bag, which is a, a Temba bag. It is 24 liters and so many people entered. I think it was over 600 and odd people. So I picked two people at random that have met all the criteria for this and also the photo speed paper as well. And they are, if you just let me get my phone, so the bag has been worn by J9777. So if you get in contact with me, Jane, I'll, I'll arrange delivery of that as soon as possible. And the paper's been worn by Hamish Cattell. So well done, guys. And that's it, I think. Yeah, don't forget the calendar. Last day for pre-orders today. Make sure you get it. Okay. Until next Sunday, bye. <laughs>